Circumference and the Roundabout Battle, a Math Adventure by Cindy Neuenschwander, illustrated by Wayne Gihan. Another great harvest day. But wait, who's that? Asked Edmund Rounds, the castle steward. He pointed to a few small tents, just visible among the trees. It's probably travelers bedding down for the night, answered Circumference. Just then, the steward's son bounded up the stairway. Ah, rounds too, keeping track of everything in the castle, asked Circumference with a smile. The boy nodded. Everyone called him rounds too, since he and his father were both named Edmund. Papa. I finished the counts you asked for, he said, handing his father two scrolls. As the castle's next steward, Rounds Two was his father's assistant. Wonderful, exclaimed Steward Rounds. Let's look these over during supper. Steward Rounds studied his son's accounts. Hmm, he murmured. Breads? 34, wheat loaves, 29, barley, and 25 rye. But the total is missing. Totals are important. I love counting, but adding up is always hard for me, rounds two confessed. Let me help you, his father said kindly. It's 34 plus 29 plus 25 which equals 88 loaves and butter, 10 garlic pots, 20 salted pots, 20 herbed pots, plus 40 sweet pots. 100 pots, rounds two called out quickly. It's easy when the numbers are groups of 10, he said. Yes, the steward agreed. Adding by tens is quite friendly. But most counts are more complicated. As stewards, it's our job to know how much of everything we have in the castle, so we won't run out. For example, there are travelers in our woods tonight who might need breakfast tomorrow. But let's get back to our numbers. Next, the steward said, are the bees and their little homes, the skeps. There are 39 skeps and Rounds two interrupted. The beekeeper said each skep housed about 1,000 bees. But he said not to touch the skeps. The bees can get angry. Ah, bees are difficult to count, Steward Rounds nodded. Sometimes knowing approximately how much is fine. But let's finish this up tomorrow, he added, noticing his son stifling a yawn. Flit off to bed now. Honey, sweet dreams. As he nodded off, Rounds Two decided that he would thank his father for his help by rising early to count the travelers. Then they would know how much food might be needed. Just before dawn, he slipped out of bed, tiptoed through the kitchens, and crept out a secret door in the castle walls. As he entered the woods, he heard deep snoring. Everyone was asleep. He counted 40 men by an old log. Another 50 were near a campfire. A group of 60 was stretched out under a massive oak tree. That's 150 men, thought rounds too. Why so many? Then he noticed a large banner with a distinctive insignia. He also noticed the tiny tents were full of bows and arrows. Uh-oh, he thought. He sprinted back to the castle. Papa, he gasped, shaking his father's shoulder urgently. The travelers in the woods, they have a banner of two hands clutching a chest of treasure. Isn't that... 
Stuart Round sat straight up, rubbing the sleep out of his eyes. He asked Rounds too to repeat himself. Then he leaped out of bed and grabbed his son's hand. Stuart Rounds raced through the castle, making his way to Sir Comforance and Lady Di's bedchamber. The travelers in the woods, they're Sir Wancelot's crew, Stuart Rounds cried out. Circumference was up in a flash. Prepare to protect the castle, he ordered. Rounds two, fetch the bow and arrow counts while your father and I organize the archers. Rounds two raced to the steward's room and grabbed the counting scrolls. But then he stopped. The totals. Although rounds two had made the weapons count, he had not added them up. Rounds two rushed to the artillery's room seeking his father's help, but everyone had already left. He decided he must do the adding. He thought back to the counts of the day before. Why can't the numbers of bows and arrows be friendly tens like the butter or approximate numbers like the bees instead of hard to add numbers like the loaves? Rounds two closed his eyes and tried to think. When he opened them, he saw a measuring tape curled in among the arrowheads, feathers, and strings. It was lined with numbers beginning at zero and ending at 100. Rounds to grab the measuring tape and started using it to change yesterday's counts of loaves of bread into their nearest friendly turn tens. Would the approximate numbers be close to the actual total? He took an arrowhead and placed it on the 34 to mark the wheat bread. He could see that the arrowhead was nearest to the friendly number 30. He then moved the arrowhead to 29, the number of barley loaves. It was also nearest to 30. Finally, he located 25 for the rye bread. That was a problem. It's smack in the middle between the friendly 20 and the friendly 30, he thought. Well, the top line of the number five seems to point toward the next 10. So I'll make it bigger. 30 it is. Rounds two easily added 30 plus 30 plus 30. That's 90. And it's very close to the 88 bread loaves that Papa added up yesterday at supper, he noted happily. Rounds two decided to add the archery counts in this fast, new, and nearly accurate way. He looked at his list. Longbows, 47. That's approximately 50, he thought. Crossbows, one dozen. That's 12, so I'll make it the friendly 10. Shortbows, 36, or about 40. So 50 plus 10 plus 40 is 100 bows. Now for arrows, he murmured. There are 77 large bodkins. That's about 80. The 23 medium ones would be approximately 20. And 98 small ones. Hmm. The closest friendly 10 to 98 is 100. So 80 plus 20 plus 100 is 200 arrows. He was done very quickly. He looked at his list with satisfaction before sprinting to the main guard tower. The attack, announced Circumference grimly. Here, said Rounds Two, breathlessly handing the list to his father, who passed it to Circumference. Circumference and Steward Rounds studied the scroll. We don't have very many arrows, said the knight, a worried look on his face. Sir wants a lot, and his men took aim. Twit, 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 slender shafts streaked overhead. A castle guard peered through an arrow slit. They're busy as bees down there, he yelled. Busy as bees, thought Rounds too. This gave him an idea. He rushed to the rampart, shook the skeps, and pushed them over the edge of the wall. Bees go berserk, he commanded. As each of the 39 skeps crashed to the ground, 1,000 bees, more or less, angrily swarmed out and stung the invaders. Sir wants a lot and his men sprinted away, never to return. 
That was a lot of bees, explained Circumference. Close to 40,000, said Rounds too helpfully. Huzzah, shouted everyone in the castle. Huzzah for Rounds too. Bazaar is more like it, cried Circumference with a very hearty laugh. Rounds too continued to use his method of finding friendly tens when he was adding up the daily castle counts. He discovered that taking exact numbers and making them a little less exact gave him time to count and total more each day. As a result, he and his father ran the castle more efficiently. The steward named it the Rounds 2 method. Today we still use Rounds 2's idea. When we speak of a number and its closest round approximation, we say it rounds to that friendly number. Great! Now let's practice the round two method. You have five dollars in allowance money. What can you buy? Round to the nearest friendly ten to find out. You can use this ruler or if you have a ruler at your desk or a measuring tape, you can use that. Let me ask you, can you buy everything that's here? What, what would you buy to use up most of your money? What do we have here? One mystery egg toy for $2.58. Balloons for 30 cents. One bar of chocolate for 78 cents. A taco for $1.29. Comic book for $3.17. Chips for $1.05. A Beyblade for $4.80. Three Pokemon cards for $1.10. Or crayons for $0.25. Cents. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and don't forget to tell your friends. Thank you.